Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. So we were having problems here on my home network. Uh, I've got a wireless access point in uh, the basement, and uh, we, we were running into problems. Brandon, how did Would you know we were having problems? Because you run an airport. That's not, <laughs> that's not why we were having problems. The problem was... That you had multiple access points that all had the same SSID, which okay. is generally a bad thing. Especially if they're not on the same channel, because if you have two SSIDs on two separate channels that are the same SSID, your wireless radio in your computer is usually going to get confused and try to switch back and forth between them, okay. which degrades your network performance overall from your machine. It doesn't have anything to do with your actual network performance in your home, but it will degrade it uh, in terms of how you're performing, because one minute you'll be connected to one, and then the next minute you'll be connected to the other one. And somewhere along the way, you're probably dropping packets, or you well, have to refresh the page. Well, or N allows you to actually talk on two channels at the same time. So your N device may decide that it thinks that it should be able to shotgun two wireless connections, and you're sending bits to two different places. And if one of those is a repeater, then it's not repeating. But the it's... airport software said I was doing fine. It says, what do you want to do? I said, I wanted to extend a wireless network, and that's what I thought I was doing. And the light was it was green. The light was green. It must be happy. <laughs> so what did we do to fix this problem of two access points uh, with the same SSID? So instead of your configuration that you had previously, we switched you over to a WDS wireless distribution system, which allows you to have one that is basically the brains of the operation and a second uh, network node that just phones home back to the other one. And it becomes all one SSID that's unified under the WDS. And how'd you configure it in the airport then? As uh, the screen, I gotta, so I gotta, wake, the, gotta wake the screen back up. But uh, so you start with the base station that you want to have be your main WDS configuration. You go into manual setup on the airport utility, and you go to WDS. Actually, first you go to wireless, and say that you want to participate in a WDS network. And then after you've chosen that, you go over to WDS, you configure your first base station as a WDS main, and you have to allow wireless clients, and you also have to put the MAC address in of the base station that you want to be your remote. Which and is on the initial screen on the airport. For or, yes. or if you hover over it. As yeah, if you hover over it um, and then have a insanely great memory for MAC addresses, as I do, you can simply commit it to memory and then type it back out. See, now, like I said, everything was working just fine. It just wasn't optimized. It wasn't working just fine, though, because there's been lots of times where I would come over here and use your network, and I would have to do, like, a hard refresh of whatever I was doing because my session would drop. Or I would do the surfing the web, and it'd be like, oh, your speed test says that we're running at 400K. And I'd be like, no wonder my Internet seems slow. Oh, and, you and, never and, noticed because you're probably hardwired. Yeah, right I'm, here. I'm primarily hardwired in the house. Yeah. Right, and I just ran the speed test on your connection and got 40 megabits. Okay, so this is just with the airport. What could, assumedly, you could set up a WDS on or through any router. Yes. Mm -hmm. Primarily, though, you would want to make sure that you were choosing matching routers so that you like so brands. Two two airports, two Cisco routers, two Netgear routers. At so least that, I got that right. Not because not because. You couldn't make two of them talk to each other, but at least that way you know that if they have done some weird variation on the WDS standard, that it matches the weird variation. You're not having two conflicting weird variations. And if you don't want to spend the money to get two that match, if you have two devices that both run DDWRT, which right. is a custom firmware, yeah. essentially then they match because you can make sure that you're firmware. running the same version of the software. Yeah, I used to do T-Bore with an old Linksys like yep. way back in the day. Yeah. Okay. So the thing we, we didn't cover here is that after we configured the WDS main and added the remote as a remote on the main, you have to then go over to your second base station, also click manual setup, and then choose, uh, make sure that it is also participating in a WDS network from the same wireless. Uh, they, yeah, they need to be on the same channel. So um, in this case, they're both on channel 11. Um, then you go over to WDS and you designate that, that your second base station is a WDS remote. Um, you have to also allow wireless clients because otherwise nothing will connect to your remote. And um, it looked to me like 
the first time that we did this before we skipped around a lot that it auto populated what the WDS main was because it was the only one available. So as long as you're not playing around like we did with uh, buried configurations, this should auto populate. If it doesn't auto populate, you can get the MAC address by hovering over your other base station. So then, you know, right now it's showing yellow. See, this usually when the network works, at least, I, I don't really have any complaints. How would someone know if their network wasn't optimized, like, performance-wise? Because, I mean, I, a like speed I said, test. I was fine. But, Do a speed test. Um, right, but I've run a speed test before, wirelessly or wired, and it seemed to be just fine. But that's because you probably got lucky on the roll of the dice mm -hmm. in terms of your test. I mean, if you So what's a definitive way? Because, I mean, the airport admittedly, even though it's a desktop client, does make it nice in, in the sense that if it's not green, you're not good. Well, so I, how, how, how would someone know they have an optimized wireless network? And I think it's the bigger question. Well, so, so the big thing here is um, you don't want to have two base stations show up as the same SSID. So in your case, you had live.perlo.com twice displaying if you, if you looked at the available networks. If you got two... That's a problem. Right. And, and usually I have it set to like an automatic channel. How do you know what the best channel is? I mean, I've used Kismac before to, to kind of stumble so, so into the, the local access points. If your hardware supports auto, that's usually the best because it's going to pick a channel that it's getting the lowest packet retry on. And that may be a more crowded channel just because there are other things that interfere. I mean... Some guy talking on his CB could be interfering, and you get better channel on, you know, eleven, even though there's four other people because it's at the top of the range. Um, so auto is usually best, but otherwise it is just kind of a pick one, run a speed test, pick another one, run a speed test, just pick speed one. Test .net. The the best the best advice is generally don't pick the one that it defaults to because most people take default settings.